100 years ago, an amazing thing happened. A paradigm shift, an awakening that changed humankind's knowledge of the cosmos. That's when we became space woke. So woke, it's an apt adjective. Remember when you were young and you were given a drawing of a forest and were asked to count the bunnies and you swore that there were no bunnies. But then you looked, and then you saw one bunny, and then you saw another one, and another, and another, and suddenly, you couldn't look at that forest and not see the bunnies. That's what's known as being woke. So the bunnies in the trees optical illusion is just one example of what's known as a paradigm shift. That aha moment when your whole world view has taken a 180. So a hundred years ago, we became space woke because of this. Now this is a telescope, but it's a very, very special telescope. But I'll get back to that in just a minute. Five years ago, the Mars One Foundation developed a mission plan, a one-way mission plan using today's technologies. And by today's, I mean five years ago's technology. We've come so far already. For a one-way mission to set up the basis of a colony to live on, live on Mars, they invited every, anyone from around the world, age 18 to 85, to apply. And over time, 202,000 people applied. And honestly, you know, I, one of my favorite jobs was working on a fishing boat in the Bering Sea. So I was like, spaceship, yes, yay, science, right? After fielding all these applicants and eliminating those who the applications were, which weren't complete or were not serious. They narrowed it down to several thousand, and then they announced the round two candidates, which was 1,058 people. And then after a barrage of medical tests, yes, you know, we, they narrowed it down to 600. And then they announced their round three, 100, 100 round three candidates. And out of these 100, 24 will be selected to go through an immersive 10-year training program, not to go into low Earth orbit and come back to Earth, but to live on Mars permanently. Now, I am no astrophysicist. I am not a rocket scientist. I'm not a fighter pilot or an exobiologist. I'm just a plain old architect, and I consider myself a placemaker, and that's where my passions lay. So imagine, if you will, living with 11 other people in a tin can for the rest of your life. <laughs> I can imagine it. But Mars, <laughs> but living on Mars is not for everyone. Colonizing Mars, but colonizing Mars is is like the talk of the town now. And it's not a matter of if, but when. So you're asking yourself, how did we get here? This, this accepted inevitability of human expansion into the solar system. Now, back to this. This, this moment of space woke that happened 100 years ago was because of the telescopes at the Mount Wilson Observatory in California. And namely, this big, beautiful, steampunk tool of science, the 100-inch Hooker Telescope that went active in 1917. In 1925, astronomer Edwin Hooker, <laughs> Edwin Hubble, <laughs> I'm back on the telescope, man. Edwin Hubble discovered that the cosmos is 
larger than we'd ever imagined, and also that the universe was expanding. The universe at the time was assumed to be the Milky Way and, and those things called stars, right? But the astronomers at the Mount Wilson Observatory opened our collective eyes. The Andromeda, this is a picture of the Andromeda galaxy. Light years away, but so much like our own Milky Way. Blobs, planets that were blobs in the night were suddenly seen, would suddenly came in focus. And over, at, through it all, keep in mind that the people, if you put yourself in shoes 100 years ago, the universe was just open to uh, whatever was in your imagination. And it seemed like overnight, their, their whole point of view became de debunked because they were space woke. Now, there's a book out there called no one may ever have the same knowledge again. And in it are 33 letters written by people to the astronomers of the Mount Wilson Observatory between 1915 and 1935. They are meticulously scanned and reproduced, in handwritten and all. And when you look at them, you see these heartbreaking and poignant testimonies of people's worldview being threatened by what these astronomers were discovering at that time. And, and, and as, we, as we know, disorientation and denial are, are very typical of being suddenly awakened. But there was no going back. Everyone, as we know, we went forward with our discoveries, we would never look at the universe the same again. In the last 100 years, our imaging capabilities and our scientific discoveries have, has grown almost exponentially. And we, are, we have discovered, we are still discovering so much about our planetary neighbors. For instance, well, we know the moon, it has no atmosphere and no gravity, and uh, a, a lunar day is two Earth weeks long. Twelve humans have walked on its surface so far. Right? Seems like we're finding a new moon for Jupiter almost every day now. There's around 70 moons around Jupiter. We know that uh, Venus is hot, Mercury hotter. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, they're all gassy and bloated. And we know now, recently, that Pluto has a heart. But what about Mars? Well, Mars wants to kill you. There's global dust storms. There's percolates on the surface. It's freezing. Solar and cosmic radiation amidst a host of other negatives. But these are things that are not showstoppers. They're not uh, truly negative because through wherewithal and intelligence, we can overcome these things. I like to quote Sir David Attenborough. Humans are a flexible an innovative species, and we have the capacity to adapt and modify our behavior. Yes, Mars is a very extreme environment, but hey, all it takes is time and money and commitment, right? To fulfill our ongoing search for our place in the cosmos. Hey, but on the bright side, Mars. Mars has massive amount of water. It can extract oxygen and hydrogen or fuel. It's got 38% of Earth's gravity. It has a 24-hour, 39-minute day, just like Earth. Yeah. It has a 25-degree axial tilt. So it has seasons. Who'd have thunk? And when I look at a picture like this, I get oh, heart just, you know, oh, 
brings a tear to my eye because this looks just like Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> I love the serenity of the desert scape. So there are so many questions that we can get answers to and research that can be done with boots on the ground. Over a hundred years ago, we lived in a universe full of guesses. 100 years ago, we became space woke with the Hooker telescope. 66 years ago, Ver astrophysicist and space architect Werner von Braun outlined a human mission to Mars. 49 years ago, we walked on our moon. 20 years ago, living on Mars was nothing but fiction. And five years ago, the Mars One Foundation propelled the idea of colonizing Mars into the spotlight. But it's not just Mars One. SpaceX, they're working on their heavy lift Big Falcon rocket and their interplanetary transport system right now for Mars colonization. NASA is implementing their own mission to Mars. The Japan Space Agency and the European Space Agency. They're collaborating on robotics and human missions to Mars. The Canadian Space Agency are looking into research into the long-term effects of health and biomedical effects of long-duration spaceflight. Even the Russian Space Agency is looking into the Humans to Mars effort. So to quote Dr. Robert Zubrin, president of the Mars Society, Mars is the next logical step in our space program. That challenge has been staring us in the face. And yes, we can be a cruel and abusive species. All that, despite all that, we can engineer solutions and explore the solar system to expand and look into our place in the cosmos. Because once again, we are woke. We are space woke. Thank you.